Scientists in the U.S. say they have developed an artificial womb that could dramatically increase the chances of survival for premature babies. Researchers have already successfully tested these liquid-filled sacs on lamb fetuses. They say if the technology can be used on humans, it could offer extremely premature babies a crucial opportunity to develop their lungs and other organs. Dr. Arthur Kaplan is a professor of bioethics at the New York University School of Medicine, and he joins me now. Dr. Kaplan, welcome. Thanks for having me. This is an extraordinary development. The survival rate of a baby born prior to 24 weeks is about 50 percent. Can you explain how these artificial wombs increase the chances of survival? Before 22 weeks, the fetus doesn't have lungs. It can't breathe air. It doesn't have the capability. It actually breathes the, in through the fluid in the amniotic sac of the mother. So it's got, when we see pregnant women with their bellies, it's breathing that fluid. It's kind of like a mermaid. This device, this technology, will let you artificially save those kids. If they get born prematurely, you could put them into the artificial womb and they could breathe the fluid, just like in a mom. In addition to that, what are some of the other challenges associated with a premature birth? So premature babies have other underdeveloped organs. They can't really process nutrition well. When you see them in those neonatal ICUs, they're having a tough go of it. This will let them grow larger, have all their organ systems ready to go. So it's really good for handling this terrible problem of premature birth. And why did researchers choose to test fetal lambs? And just how similar are they to human babies? You know, it's funny. You might think lambs, what does mm -hmm. that have to do with people? Right. But they're actually a really good model. What has tended to work, at least in pregnancy, in lambs has tended to be pretty predictive of what works in people. Wow, that's um, something that I think most people wouldn't <laughs> realize. Well, in terms of cost, how will these devices affect the medical costs and expenses that come oftentimes when a baby is born prematurely? They're gonna be expensive. Even now, a neonatal, excuse me, a neonatal intensive care unit, it's a very expensive place to have a baby. This technology would put more babies into those settings, so not cheap. So there are ethical questions now being raised about what could potentially be the social implications of this technology if, in fact, uh, babies are able to live longer with these devices. So the interesting thing I don't think it's been picked up on yet is fetal viability. When you think about the abortion debate, is set at 24 weeks. That's when the lungs develop. That's when the child can exist outside the woman. What if you could push it back to 19 weeks, 16 weeks? That's going to really if you will, be tender to the abortion fire. Other issue, should we make babies completely outside the body? You grow them in a controlled environment like this and say, hey, we'll get you the right nutrition, we'll get you the optimal air, we'll do it absolutely right. Maybe there's gonna be a dispute about natural birth versus artificial birth. Or people who may be struggling with infertility issues. Infertility, even people who uh, may be single men or mm -hmm. other, you know, people who say, this is the road to having my baby. A whole host of issues. Well, back in 1996, you were quoted in the New York Times saying that the artificial womb would be available in 60 years. Now, only two decades later, they've been successfully tested. First of all, how did you know? <laughs> and also, when do you think we might actually see this being used with humans? Well, so far, only off by 40 years, so mm -hmm. that's not bad. Mm -hmm. But I knew it was going to happen because the problem is chemicals. And as soon as you figure out how those chemicals work inside the mom, that technology was going to be here. And the pressure to do things to help preemie babies that we can't save because they don't have lungs yet, they haven't developed, is enormous. Inevitable that we'll get it. How soon will we see it used in humans? I'll just go on record and say I think another five to eight years. What's working in the lambs has a pretty good chance of working in people. It's that predictive with the lambs, yes. you think? Five to eight years. Mm -hmm. All right, you heard it here first, Dr. Arthur Kaplan. Thank you so My much pleasure. for your time, really appreciate it.